Today on Max's Man Cade, we're going to look at the Mayflash Dolphin Bar and the Wiimote. See if that's a reasonable facsimile for playing light gun games on your RetroPie. Short answer? No, not really. The long answer is this video. Light gun games have been a staple of the arcade longer than you can imagine. And sure, many gamers got their first taste of light gun shooters with Nintendo Zapper for the NES, playing Duck Hunt and Hogan's Alley back in the mid 80s. But the origin of light gun games dates back much further. And yeah, okay, the 70s you'll say, but you'd be wrong and you'd be even wronger. I'm not sure if that's a word actually, if you said the 60s. Okay, and since you know your math, most of you, I guess, uh, your next guess would be the 50s, but sadly, no, that's the birth of rock and roll. And not with Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley and his comments, but Rocket 88 in 51 by Jackie Brents and his Delta Cats featuring Ike Turner from, you got it, Ike and Tina Turner and way back then. So yeah, light gun games actually predate rock and roll, man. And okay, not the 40s. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. What if I told you light gun games were actually invented in the 1500s by Leonardo da Vinci's mailman's butcher? Well, then I'd be full of shit. The first light gun games were actually made in 1936 by an American company called Seberg, started by a Swedish dude by the name of Justice Percival Seberg. I guess that's how he pronounced it when he came to the US. And of course, it was a duck shooting game, housed in a nice handsome wooden box, and players used a, a rifle, much like we do today with Big Buck Hunter. So he went from shooting ducks to making games where they're shooting bears to games where you shot your boss and your mother-in-law. <laughs> the dirty 30s, man. And that brings us full circle to 2020. And you just want to shoot some ducks and criminals and aliens in the comfort of your house. But shooting mother-in-laws, not condoned, fellas. If you do decide to go for the dolphin bar, you can see I've attached it underneath the Street Fighter uh, A1-Up cab, which I've modded. Uh, this is Duck Hunt. You're probably familiar with that. That's the Nintendo uh, arcade version, not the NES version, although they're pretty similar. And uh, so I, through trial and error, I've discovered that it does work better up in the top. And if you do want the full arcade experience, you might want to invest in a couple of these. Um, these are just for your Wiimotes that go in there. Uh, a two-pack Canadian was eighteen forty-nine. The um, the Dolphin Mayflash um, uh, uh, bar, uh, I think it was fifty-six or fifty-seven dollars on Amazon, which is not uh, you know not cheap, uh, especially you know for something that that works okay. Uh, once you get it hooked up to your retro pie, basically what it's going to run as is a is a mouse, and you'd be far better off using a mouse in terms of accuracy. But of course, it's not going to be as fun. So, let's grab my Wii mote. Um, there's enough um, videos out there that you don't need to go through this one for a setup. Definitely check out ETA Prime's video for uh, setting up the Dolphin Bar, and his looks great. Um, but you know, if you <laughs> If you're reading, or if I can save you that trouble, um, it's not that great. It looks good, and it's like, yeah, this is great. That's what I watched. I went, okay, yeah, man, this is going to be fantastic. This is going to be great. Well, okay, right? So uh, I've already got this set up here, okay? Uh, so we're going to, um, we're going to start um, a duck hunt uh, thing, and you can see my cursor on screen. Okay, so we've got uh, duck hunt loaded up, the arcade version. And I'm trying to get you an over-the-shoulder view as much as possible. You can see my cursor. If I'm looking at my cursor down through my gun um, scope here, my cursor is down quite a bit. So I'm going to shake the Wiimote a bit. And now it brings it up a little bit. That looks pretty good through my eyes. It might not look perfect for you. So let's start a game here. So 
So far, not bad. Again, not too bad. That's more like it. So sometimes I found if my uh, cursor's off, I'll spin my gun and that tends to make it a little normal, a little better. Okay, so now, even I'm just playing this last round, my cursor is off from where I'm pointing, you know, probably a good three or four inches off of where I, I was originally when I started. So if I shake it around a little bit, it's still off. I'll twist it around again. And now it's kind of come back. But that's very frustrating when you're trying to play. And, you know, there we go. Game over. Okay, so now we're trying um, versus Hogan's Alley, the arcade version. And if I'm looking down my cursor, it's pretty lined up. It's pretty good. So I'll start a game. Now, this one is not as uh, frantic as Duck Hunt. Because you've only got one plane, really, at this point. I find myself far more successful on Hogan's Alley than, than Duck Hunt. Ah, shot the old man. Eh, maybe he deserved it. Wasn't wearing his mask. Playing a game like Hogan's Alley will definitely be a little bit easier than Duck Hunt, depending how far you're going to get. Especially with Duck Hunt, when you get to the skeet shooting, uh, that's almost impossible um, with this because it just moves so, you know, if I'm just going to keep it on the screen with my hand steady, I mean, that's not bad. But, um, you know, the problem is, is that there's so much, uh, so much shift as you're playing, this thing, this cursor just goes off. You have to constantly adjust your playing or shake your thing around to try to get it back into any semblance of where it was originally. Uh, a drift and shift is a little bit uh, too much for my liking on, uh, on a game, um, on a shooting game like this. So yeah, you know what? I mean, it's a reasonable facsimile. Reasonable being the operative word, I don't know. Your mileage may vary on that. Um, the, you know, Canadian wise, you're going to spend, uh, you know, uh, like 20 bucks if you want that, uh, if you want the guns, um, you know, you all, hopefully you already have the Wiimote or that's going to be an investment. The Dolphin Bar is another 56 bucks or so. Let's hope you have Amazon Prime. American, you're not, of course, not going to be spending as much, but it's still an outlay of, of cash for something that it's like, nah, you know what? Um, my high recommendation um, is the Sindon light gun. Uh, there's also the aim track, but uh, I believe the Sindon definitely is the way to go uh, if you're serious about your light gun games. Um, I'm not really serious about it, and this was fine, but, you know, I've had people play it, and, you know, they remember playing it in the arcades um, or even on the Zapper with the Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES, and... Uh, you know, rarely do they go back for a sec uh, second game, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, with a Sindon light gun that's hooked up, and you can spend a lot more money, but you're going to get a lot more um, a lot more accuracy. I would definitely say that is the way to go on, uh, on this particular product. So, with the Dolphin Mayflash light bar and the Wiimote and the gun cases... I'd say give it a pass, to be honest. If you're going to invest any amount of money, even if it's like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, or higher, depending, uh, put that towards a Sindon. Go on, uh, I'll put a link underneath um, the video. Go check that out, and I think you're going to be much Just happier. please note that I know um, with the holidays and everything, the Sindon light guns, uh, uh, the shipments, um, it's a Kickstarter, uh, so um, or Indiegogo they're taking a while. So you got to be patient. You may not, you may put this money in and not get a send in for a few months, but you got to be prepared for that. This guy's good for it, but you just have to just be patient. And if you're as much of a fan of Operation Wolf as I am, 
You'll love to play this game the proper way. This is not the proper way. 